For me, what happened was, you know, people kept asking me in 1979 when I quit music, uh, by the way, after being fired eight times on Apocalypse Now. <laughs> Walter Murch? Or, yeah. No, yeah, Walter. No, no, it wasn't Walter who fired me. But uh, he hired me back eight times, whoever it was who fired me. So, and I got double the amount of money each time, so don't worry about it. The, 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 when I, I quit music in 1979, and so when people would come up to me, why did you quit music? You had a great career in music. And I said, I didn't give up music. I found it. And by looking at the natural world, I really rediscovered a whole area that had never been looked at, particularly in Western music by Western composers. There are a lot of composers who've done music with, uh, with bird sound. But what they've done is, there were only the melodic birds that happened to fit the musical paradigms of the academy of their time, Messiaen being a perfect example of that. The, 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 it wasn't that he wasn't a great ornithologist, he was a fine ornithologist, and he and his wife would go through the French woods and notate all the birds, but only the birds that he could notate. All the other birds were left out. There are 10,000 birds, maybe 100 have been used in Western literature. And the other problem with Western composers is that typically we've used signature creatures, a wolf or a whale, or a particular bird that has a, a, you know, is able to sing a melody that we understand. And what happens, what I found from working in, in this field is that if you're really paying attention and if you're really out there and in sync with what's going on, you can't help but embrace the idea that there's a whole other spectrum of art out there, sound art, that needs to be explored, and it, be, it can be explored from so many different ways. Uh, my experience was <clears throat> that I had, um, as a kid, I was drunk with dance, just moving all the time, and <clears throat> it seemed to open portals for me and was a world that I loved to get lost in. And so when I began formal training, I'd already had a very personal relationship with creativity and um, not being concerned with form, but you know, following and listening and feeling. And so when I was brought into the, the formal education, I just looked at it as another way. And so it wasn't intimidating. It was just, oh, here's another way to look at this. And so I'd already had a very personal private way, and I think that really saved me. <laughs> Often there's this argument about you know art making and that this part is technique and that this part is artistry but they're combined together they're inseparable um, there's a paradigm that's disappearing in training where the thought was that you don't develop an artist you build the fundamentals the mechanics you get the technique in there and then you can begin to talk about artistry. Well, after 10 years of being a machine, you're not gonna switch you know, and bloom into an artist. It has to be from the very beginning. And so I see everything as technique. It's like, how do you open a can? Is it with a rock? It was the can opener? Whatever's gonna get it open, that's gonna be the technique. And so a lot of the, the mechanics that come, that are in dance, all of them are from nature. Every single one. We say pirouette because classical form is codified in French, but pirouette is what? It's a whirlpool. It's an eddy. It's what the earth does on its axis as it's going around the sun. And so every movement is based somewhere in nature. 